Welcome to Christmas. Thanks for uh, joining us again, those of you who are joining us online, and also those of you who are here in the building. So just turn around and say, wave at somebody that you maybe don't know. <laughs> but we're glad that you're here this morning, and uh, thanks again for being here and being a part of the message today. And that's normal, that's natural. Our minds naturally gravitate towards things that's negative. Um, actually, believe it or not, God created us that way. He created us that way because when you think of, you, we're always thinking of, you know, what's the worst that could happen because you're trying to protect yourself. It's self-preservation. But when we, and it used to be really bad. You know, I can remember when I was a kid, we grew up very poor. Um, you had to think some negative things, you know, had to process it. But what happens is when we think negative things and our mind tells us, even if it brings up fear, the purpose is to take some kind of action about that, not to just let that linger and worry you. And, and what we end up doing is not taking action and the thought just stays there and it just lingers. And then, uh, then it affects your health, your blood pressure, and everything else. But when we talk about joy, we're talking about the ability, even though negative things may, we may see negative things, it's the ability to make the connection so that you can actually, through faith and hope in God, and based on even what's happened in the past, you can say, I believe everything's going to be all right. And you are part of that equation. You're not just you know, absent out of the equation saying it's going to be all right. You are part of it. You help to make things all right. You help those things to happen the way it is. So I believe that for joy, there's a starting point. Um, if you listen to the pre-sermon video there, it talked about happiness and joy, and there definitely is a difference. One of the things that I've learned that reminds me of how to separate it is happiness depends on something happening. And so if, you, if it doesn't happen the way you desire, then you're probably not happy, <laughs> okay? And so joy goes beyond that. Joy is, is a condition basically of your soul. You reach deeper than just the things that happen and your response to those things that happen. Your response is from something deeper on the inside not depending on the things that happen on the outside, whether it brings you happiness or not. So I believe that there is a, there, there's, there's a connection and there's a way for us to experience joy. And I call this, um, I, uh, and excuse me for all my different ways of bringing up things, but I call this a biofeedback loop, <laughs> okay? Um, and so we're going to get into that, but I have a question, <laughs> I have a question for you first. Um, this, this is the question for you. What are some things that, are gr that you are grateful for now that come to mind? I mean, one, the reason I'm asking this question is um, I believe that the starting point for joy is as we remember and, and experience gratitude for the things that have already happened. You're not... You don't have gratitude for everything that's happened, but you have to think and you have to focus on what good has happened. And as you focus on those good things, then that is a starting point for joy. Um, and I, the way I grew up on Sundays was the day that we, we did this. You know, how many of you grew up where you had testimony service? <laughs> It was like, I want to testify. And anybody in the congregation could stand up and testify. So, and whatever they had gone through that week and overcome, that was their testimony. And then when they got done telling you, you know, so well, and a lot of people had the same old things. I can remember some of the, it was just the same thing every single week. I mean, the devil was after me and and he tried, but thank God he didn't catch me. And then they danced a little game. Hallelujah. But we need, <laughs> we need to 
we need to kind of get back to that, even if there's an oppor- not an opportunity on a Sunday for everybody to hear everything that you went through, because some people went on and on and on. That's probably one reason why we don't do testimony service no more. One person would just take up the whole time and, and do the whole thing. But we, it's important for us to think about some things that you are grateful for. So even in this moment, just think of one thing that you are grateful for right now. Just, just you know, uh, it's, some of it is easy. I mean, some, like when I said that in church before, some people would just testify and say, well, I thank God that he woke me up this morning. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy, you know, it started me on my way, uh, gave me my strength and my life and my limbs and my family, food on the table, yeah. Um, but even personal growth, just things that, you know, as we approach the end of the year, what are some of the things that you are grateful for that you, that even if you went through some things, but you're grateful where you are now this year? you know, the path of life that you're on, all of those things. Um, So another question is to think of some things that are in your past that you're grateful for. You know, I think of um, one of the main things I think about when I think about my past is my grandfather. My grandfather on my uh, maternal grandfather on my mother's side, uh, he was my spiritual hero. He, when I was uh, just before my teen years, um, our family moved from Mississippi to Chicago. Moving to Chicago was not a good thing for me at all. I got into all kinds of trouble the very first few months that I was there. By the end of the year, I was asking my parents if I could move back to Mississippi to live with my grandfather because I knew what kind of man he was. And I mean, by the time I was, anyway, that's another story. But I lived with him in my early teens, and without him even knowing it, I just watched him. I just observed him. He was a pastor, and uh, I would go with him to different churches. Um, the, the way the organization was set up, he was what you call a superintendent. So he, overs- he had oversight of 21 churches, I remember. So during the summer, we visit all of those churches and the pastors of those churches. And, but what stuck out to me is that he loved people. He loved people. And that's what stuck to me. That's probably why I have the pastoral gift on the inside of me now. He was, without him knowing it, he was my very first mentor. But I am so grateful that he made that deposit in me, um, and he doesn't even know that he, you know, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't have the ability to even tell him when it was happening that, oh, I am so glad you did this for me, but he's gone now, but, and when I think about those things, that's what stirs up the joy, because joy connects the past, the present, and the future. And so what you want to be able to do is experience joy even about the things that you are hoping for. As you experience it and express it in the moment, it actually does something on the inside of you as far as your expectation. It raises your expectation, raises your faith, raises your hope, and and give you different ways to actually accomplish that. So... When I look at the dictionary, one of the things that talks about joy is it's the feeling of great pleasure and happiness. And so we've already talked about the difference in happiness, but you can see how if you can't feel it, then joy is not expressed. So when you express the, the feeling that you, even if it's a thought about the past, you know, even as I was talking about my grandfather, there's a feeling that comes. So you can't really separate it. So joy is still a feeling, but it goes beyond your feeling. It's, it's, it's deeper than that. It's what I call soul satisfying. It's, it's the emotional well-being. It's the connection of all of that. So the next, the first scripture that I want us to read today has to do with the song that we are all familiar with around Christmas time, Joy to the World. How many of you know where that song came from? I used, 
I'm going to tell you, I used to think that it came from Luke, the second chapter, where it talks about uh, the angels that saw, you know, was announcing Jesus' birth. Actually, joy to the world has nothing to do but with Christmas. <laughs> Out loud, together, when, when I say go. But you can see here, this is the beginning of Psalms 98, 4. And let's all read this together. Ready, go. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in song. Rejoice and sing praises. So that's the first verse. So you can see that's joy to the world, right? <laughs> and, and then the next verse goes on to say, sing to the Lord with a harp, with a harp and the sound of a psalm. And it goes on, and with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. Again, let earth receive his King, right? And then let's go on. Let the sea roar in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. You know that part is, right? Wild fields and floods, <laughs> rock hills and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're good. And so it goes on to say, for he is coming to judge the earth with righteousness. He shall judge the world and the peoples with equity. So he rules the world with truth and grace. That's this part right here. So you can see this is really not a, it's more to do with Christ's second coming than it is with his birth. And even although we have made it a Christmas carol and we love it and we sing it, um, but the wonders of his love, uh, this is what we're talking about, the wonders of his love, the fact that he did send Jesus. Jesus did come to the earth, but he was even going, Isaac Watts was going beyond the birth to be him being on earth and returning to set up his kingdom. Amen? So, this is where we're going with this. Now, um, as I said before, based on our human, the way God created us, we gravitate towards the negative because it protects us. That's the way we, from things not working out. You even, how many of you, even when you had a hope and it seemed like it wasn't working out, then you put yourself in a, it's almost like self-sabotage. You put yourself in a situation, so now it's like, well, I really didn't care anyway. <laughs> you know, you try to get rid of that hope. Well, what this message does is this. This message challenges us to begin what I call the biofeedback. We're going to talk about that. It's a loop, but it's the loop of joy that comes from gratitude. And so when we can, gratitude is something we can experience because of the good things that's already happened, then that's the beginning of the loop for joy. But joy is important because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so it helps us to move through the whole process and we can, we can move back through that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a couple of examples of positive biofeedback. Are you ready? The first one is childbirth. Did you know that there's biofeedback in childbirth? It's amazing. When I looked at this, I mean, when, 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 first of all, when the baby's ready to be born, the baby's ready to come out, then there's pressure on the cervix of the, of the mother, Right? That creates and generates a signal to the brain to release oxytocin. The release of the oxytocin then goes back. It's a, it, I mean, I just think about this. It's like, it's amazing. So the release of the oxytocin, it diffuses back to the cervix, cervix through the blood. And then that's where the stimulation comes for the next contraction. So you get a so you it, it starts with the baby's pressure on the surface, 
Then there's the oxytocin that actually goes to the brain. Then the brain talks to the cervix again. And then when the cervix gets that signal, then it creates pressure again for contractions. And that's the loop, contractions. Then back to the brain, oxytocin release. And I mean, that's going to happen over and over and over until number five. Till the baby's born. So the, the, the loop is from three. It starts out, contractions begin, right? Number two. Then you get more pressure from oxytocin. Then the oxytocin talks to the brain. The brain releases that to the cervix. And the cervix, there's more pressure. And so that loop between two and four keeps going and going until number five. And that's when the baby comes out. Two, three, four. Two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. Some of them are ours. <laughs> some of you were, some of you ladies were in labor for, ooh. <laughs> but it's two, three, four, two, three, four until we get a five. Now, here's another one that is amazing, another biofeedback. This has to do with apples on a tree. I don't know if you ever notice how apples ripen on a tree. But when one apple ripens, and that's what we're talking about here, it's number one, the first ripe apple produces ethylene. That ethylene then actually to the neighboring apples, that ethylene actually spreads there and produces the signals to those apples and they begin to ripen. So that's why the whole tree ripens so fast because they all start releasing ethylene until they're ripe. And if you don't hurry up and get them, <laughs> they'll spoil because they are on a mission. It, it's in a loop. It's going. You, that's why you need to pick them. Get them out of there. And so that's another feedback loop. So what I'm saying is this. If you can connect those two things with a feedback, I believe gratitude is to joy what ethylene is to apples. So for you personally, if you want to experience joy and you don't have any joy, just start with gratitude, the things that you are grateful for. It will be like a loop that keeps going and going and going, you know. So here's a scripture that I want to share with you that shows the importance of, of joy. In, in Nehemiah, many of you have heard the story of Nehemiah when the part of the Israelites were in captivity and they were re he was rebuilding the walls. Um, but they were so far away from what God had planned for them. And I don't mean just geographically. They had, they had like turned their back on God, on the word of God. They were uh, not living up to what God had desired for them. They were not keeping the laws. And so in this book of Nehemiah, where he begins to talk about this, Ezra was one of the priests at the time, and Ezra had been reading. I'm giving you a little history because it's a lot for us to read, but Ezra had been reading to the people. This was near the end of them rebuilding the walls and everything, and they were starting to feel some, some cultural excitement again because they had been captivity now they're rebuilding the walls they're getting their city back so this is like restoration and so Ezra's reading from them uh, from the book of Moses book of the law could have been any of the five first books of the Bible as we know it now and he was reading and they begin to realize how far away they were were from obeying what God has said so he's reading, and the scripture says, from morning till noon. And the people stood to read while he read. And not just him, it was so many people that Ezra was reading. Nehemiah did some um, teaching also. But it talks about 13 other um, Levites, which were just like priests, who were also helping to teach the people to explain the things to the people. So as they were being taught and explained the word of God, they began to weep. They 
were, they saw how far away from the obedience of God's word until they were grieving. <laughs> it's like, this is, we've been, it's like, I'm, you know, you know how it is when you, you, you're guilty. It's like, how did I ever get here? You know, this, this is where the people were. So the next verse here I want to share with you is where Nehemiah steps in and says a couple of things. It says, then he said to them, this is Nehemiah. He said, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This was important because they, this was a time of celebration. So they were celebrating the Feast of Trumpets and the, the different feasts that were going on. So this week, as they're listening to the Word of God, they begin to be sad because of what their disobedience. But even though they were, you know, um, re being repentant and sad, Nehemiah had to call their attention to something. He said, this is a time of celebration. This is not a time for you to be sad about what you did wrong. This is not a time for you to wallow in what you did that you should have done, what you didn't do that you should have done. He encouraged the people to stop weeping. He said, go your way, eat the fat. Eat the fat means eat, eat the best part. You know, this is, you, you're, this is a celebration. Eat the fat, drink the sweet, stop weeping over your disobedience. He's mainly, he said, eat, drink, and then the, the other important thing, he says, is give portions to those who don't have anything. So open your hearts to give to those who don't have anything prepared. And the reason is why. He said, for this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord. See, a sense of joy in God a sense of joy, and when your hope is in God, when your trust is in God, as far as him supplying all of your needs, whatever it is that you can need, whether it's health, whether it's finances, whether it's relationships, whatever your needs are, when there's a sense of joy that that comes from God, that he supplies it. And when I say that, that doesn't mean that he drops it out of the sky. If there's relationship issues, you got to figure out a way to work that out. It doesn't just all of a sudden rain down good relationships <laughs> from the sky. You know, you, gotta, you need some skills sometimes. Sometimes we just don't have relationship skills to even communicate collaboratively where we can get along. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's almost like the whole, especially politically, it's like nobody is interested in actually working things out together, it's either you're all over here or you're all over here, and if you're not, we're going to kill everybody, you know? It's, it's, it's crazy when all we have to do is allow God to be the center of our joy, the center of our love, the center of our peace, and as we work things out together and putting him in the middle of all of that, then that's where our sufficiency comes from. Then when you realize that everything you are, your all in all is your strength for life, the strength that you need for life. So when we say the joy of the Lord is our strength, we're talking about the ability to rely on and trust in and make decisions based on God being the center and his joy being the center of all of that. So I want to share a couple more scriptures with you concerning this. Now, Many of you, you've heard of this. This is New Testament. James, the brother of Jesus, who said this, he said, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind. Now, where is he going with this? <laughs> right? Because So he's saying you're going to have negative circumstances. You're going to have things, people, you're going to have people who don't like you. You're going to have folks that's going to cuss you out. There's going to be some people who you just, you know, they're going to hate you. He's saying, consider it, what kind of joy? <laughs> pure, pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind. And here comes the loop. He's, this is going to be a loop. So he's saying, first of all, consider it joy. 
Here comes the loop. He says, because you know that the testing of your faith, that's the beginning of the loop, right? That's the testing of your faith produces what? Perseverance. And in the um, Old King James Version, I believe it uses the word patience right there instead of perseverance. But patience sometimes makes you feel like you're just waiting. Perseverance, like you're doing something as you're waiting and going through. But because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, and then he goes on to say this, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So the loop is you have faith. He's saying, first of all, consider it all joy. Consider or think of it as pure joy. When trials come, because those trials actually cause you to produce faith, and then faith produces perseverance and, 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 and patience. And then he says, if you persevere, that will make you mature and complete. And once you go through that whole process, you will be lacking nothing. You have a system in place where you can go through anything because you have a system. I have a system where I can look, I can consider it all joy. When things are not going well, I can consider it all joy because no matter what happens, I know things are going to turn out all right for me because God loves me. My trust is in him. My faith is in him. And then as I put my faith in him and persevere through whatever it is that I have to go through, what I'm learning as I go through this so as I learn, then I become mature. So when I go through this kind of thing the next time, I have some lessons learned to look back at, to put in place and make different decisions so I don't end up with the same pain that I had the last time, right? Amen. So again, here's that feedback loop, uh, faith and patience, testing of faith, then perseverance, and then you become mature, lacking nothing. It's amazing. So as I see these feedback loops, feedback loops <laughs> in here, I, I want to share one more scripture with you, and then we're going to close out for the day. Many of you, you've heard this scripture before, rejoice always. We used to misinterpret that and say the scripture says to be thankful and for everything, but God really doesn't tell us to be thankful for everything, but to rejoice in everything. So rejoice always, number one, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. Then he says, for this is the will of Christ concerning you. This is God's will in Christ concerning you. And what's important here is that he starts off saying rejoice. Again, that's another word for joy, and it's interpreted joy in many places. Rejoice actually puts action to the joy. So put some action to your joy, but in all of that, pray continually. Have your, have your heart open to God. That prayer is just communication with God. It's not where you got to go somewhere where nobody else is and be quiet. It's to where you open your heart to God. You're doing this continually. Pray continually. And then he said, give thanks in all circumstances. So in every situation, be, find a way to give thanks for something. And even in that situation, you're not glad that you're in the situation, but you, I want, my mind is going way faster than my mouth. <laughs> so, so one of them better slow down or what am I supposed to do? <laughs> So, so when, when you are grateful for something and you begin to express your gratefulness, it actually gives you energy f no matter what circumstance you're in. It, it, you have, it, it could be the energy to actually get you through that circumstance. And what Paul is saying here in 1 Thessalonians is that this is God's will concerning you. This is the way God has, has set it up for you. If you learn to do this, rejoice always, and then pray continually where you're always communicating with God, 
keeping him involved in whatever situation, whatever circumstance it is, where you're opening, you're open to him speaking to you. He's saying, and then in the middle of that, give thanks. Give thanks to God. Give thanks for this is God's will concerning you. Again, here's the feedback loop. Rejoice, pray, give thanks, and this is God's will. You'll be mature. And so here's our challenge for today. All right? We're getting to the challenge that I talked about earlier. So here's our challenge. Your challenge is to count your blessings. That's the beginning. Count your blessings, past and future, by expressing gratitude daily in the face of ungrateful situations and circumstances. And we all face ungrateful situations and circumstances. So in the face of all of those, just count your blessings and figure out, and we're going to talk about an easy way to do that today. So I want to mention um, a quote from a book that I, I started reading in um, an author that I had never read from before, but I found out that he's very well known. How many of you heard of Robin Sherman before? You've read some of his stuff. Um, he's actually ranked as one of the top five leadership experts in the world. And I'm like, how did I miss him? <laughs> but um, he has this deep passion for children. And one of his books, the one that I'm reading now, um, he, he's, he's um, set aside a portion of all of the royalties from that book, a portion of the royalties from that book to hit a children's uh, organization uh, that he's, in, you know, involved in. But he wants them to have a happier life. He wants them to have, those children have a healthier life. But one thing that he said, and this is a quote, and you, I've heard this quote for years. I just didn't know where it came from. Many of you have probably heard it. What you focus on grows. What you think about expands. And what you dwell upon determines your destiny. If you think about that, you'll see how true that is in your own life. As you focus on something, even if it's negative, it grows. And whatever you think about all the time, it expands. And what you dwell on is going to determine what's happening in your life for, for your future. So I want us to focus on the good things that have happened that will generate gratitude, and that gratitude will actually generate, that's, this is the loop, that gratitude will generate joy, then we can live in a joyful state because as we experience that joy, we'll become stronger every single time. So here's how we're going to do this. All right? So number one, count your blessings, right? Count your blessings. So list 10 things sometime this week, starting today when you get home, whenever. But list 10 things that you're grateful for in your life. And as you do this, I'm going to give you a way to do this. So here's how you do it. Here's the format. Say something like, I am truly blessed to have blank because blank. So this is how you're getting your gratitude out for the 10. Do this for each of the 10 things that you would list, okay? Work on this this week. This is some good Christmas homework, <laughs> all right? So... I am, re I am truly blessed to have, I mean, there are so many things that you're grateful for, but how many times have you really thought about it, and do you, eat, especially do you write it down? And then, um, but here's some categories to help you out. I listed some categories here. Your health, your body, your spiritual life, family, work, success, money, ideas, relationships, all of these different categories love, passions, nature, happiness, the planet, <laughs> the sun, air, material goods, services, pets. I thought about Joe Lee when I said pets in here. Pets, house. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Did, what was it? Your dog was doing something. Anyway, uh, 
I thought it was a person, then I found out it was a dog. I was like, oh. <laughs> like, but show your gratitude for your pet, house, condo, apartment, whatever it is, where, where, whatever it is you, you live, you know. But write down 10 things that you're grateful for. Now, here's the next part of this. There's three parts to this. Here's the next part. Read over your list each day and update it with some new things as you think of them, but don't worry about it if you don't, but read over the ones that you do write down. Then slowly say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And feel that gratitude as you say that after each item that you've listed. You know, say thank you, thank you, thank you. And release that feeling of gratitude. That's the third part. Release that feeling of gratitude as you express your gratefulness for each one of these. And the expressions of gratitude, of the gratefulness, it stirs up the joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's how you keep going even when... Um, there's no reason. You don't feel a reason to go for the joy. You know, I want to learn how to, and this is the last part of this, I want to learn how to set the joy before me. When, when you read about Jesus and him going to the cross, it says, for the joy that was set before him. So he didn't always just look back to get joy. But as you start by looking back, then the things that you are expecting from the future, you begin to rejoice because you trust that God will carry it out. It says, Jesus, in his case, it says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Again, there's that loop. And he endured. So, if you set the joy before you, whatever is in front of you and whatever is in your way, that joy will pull you through. Amen? Amen. So I want to pray for you uh, today as you, this is, some, this is some hard homework. I know this is a pretty tough assignment. So I want to pray for you today and, and give you an opportunity to connect with us. Uh, but if you would, um, if you'd like to connect with us, if you need any help with any of the, with these questions and the challenge, uh, you can scan the QR code and it's basically a form that will come up and you can um, go, you can fill it out and let us know about, enough about you that you'd like for us to know and what you'd like to have help with and we can do that. We can connect with you um, and get with you. We can pray for you. We'll do whatever you, your request is. But I want to pray right now for you uh, as we end this year and as we go into the next year. If you would just bow your heads, please. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for your grace that you have given to us to experience the joy that you have prepared for us. I thank you for every person that's hearing this message today. Every person that will hear and watch this even later that your grace would abound in their lives, in their situation, the, the different things that they are going through, uh, especially this time of the year. For some people, it's the toughest time of the year. We pray that you would even inspire us to be a part of somebody's solution. Help us to be the hope. Help us to be the love, to share the joy and share the peace, to be the peacemakers. We open our hearts to be your vessels, and we give you praise for who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year.